we're in the market for a robot. We're just trying to weigh up all the, the potential um, opportunities before, before we actually discuss it with him. Yeah, we think so. I mean, he's quite a solitary man anyway. Um, and we think that he calls it the constant bothering. He's quite kind of pro being on his own really now because he's kind of getting used to it. The potentials for, for the robot going a bit crazy are, are really low, we think. Health insurance are kind of quite strict on what they'll let us go up to and then we've got to make up the rest ourselves. So yeah, it's kind of price driven versus, you know, what we can get for the money at the moment. Um, not really because robots aren't sentient beings, so I I don't really get it. They've got a lot in place to, to kind of stop this this happening now. Okay. Safeguards, yeah. We we originally bought um one of the caring robots for my um grandparents in law, I guess. So Rob was discussing about his granddad. I thought this is really similar to my own granddad and maybe I could get one of these robots and I could afford it as well. I'm an entrepreneur. We run hotels, bed and breakfasts and takeaways. My husband and I decided to get the robot after my friend Sarah got one for her parents. So my father-in-law is now um, in his early 90s and at the moment he's living at home but having to think about going into a nursing home. When I have to study abroad, when I have to work a lot, the robot did it for me on my behalf to take care of my grandparents. Also, they recorded the moments that I'm not there. Yeah, I found them to be extremely useful as, as flexible labor. We've had problems with a lot of sitters, a lot of sitters. Just our kids, we have three really wonderful kids, but they give uh, our sitters a hard time. It's for my mother, who's 96, in a nursing home all the work is done by the staff. In your own home, it was your place and you had a role in it. But once you move into a nursing home, you are the person to whom things are done and it's much more difficult to find meaningful activity. He's quite adamant that he doesn't want to go into a nursing home um, because he prefers his independence and he's lived in the house for 50, 50 or so years. And so we got it for the both of them because they're getting to a point where as they both age, she's not able to take care of him independently. Taking care of your old folks in India is considered a very cultural thing. They stay in the household, the entire family stays with them. So the idea, I think the cultural idea is to you know, have children playing in the same household who are really close to, to their granddad. I know, that, I know that they're not intended to take care of children, I know that they are intended for the elderly, but as somebody who works for a tech company, I'm, I'm constantly thinking of new ways to apply technology to different situations, and I, I saw how well this robot was handling my friend's parents, and I thought I could apply that. Well, that's what I'm really looking into, is whether the robot could improve her quality of life. Very much cost-effective, depending on how they're used. My grandma would always eat sweets when I'm not there, like candy stuff, but she's diabetic. But with the robot there, she would help, the robot would help to change their uh, diet um, preferences and help them to eat healthier. That's one of the things. Well, he's having, he's having memory problems. Um, he's quite lonely as well um, because they live in the countryside, so he's quite isolated. And also he's finding some physical tasks quite difficult. We help them by uh, our microwave. So they weren't about to go and find a robot to purchase for their home. So we helped um, select the, the correct one. My name is Erilyn Bruce and I'm a retired lecturer from Bradford Dementia Group. What mum watched mostly in her latter years at home was, was David Attenborough. And she had all the David Attenborough programmes on DVD and she was happy to watch them over and over again because she adored David Attenborough and wildlife programmes. I think a concern about a robot is that, that communicating with the robot to set it up to do the right things for mum might be too technical. There's been a tendency since my mum went into what's considered to be quite a good home for everybody to look on the positive side of the home and perhaps to underplay the extent to which life is pretty 
pretty boring and they would be more likely to say right can you make it do x to somebody else <laughs> really <laughs> so it would need a sort of lead person to do that it just as the robot in a way is a is a device to to monitor the nursing home and the quality of care they're giving the nursing home and the staff will be there to monitor the care the robot's giving well their home are obviously going to have to review their policy on whether they allow these individual people to have their own robots. Um, I mean, there may be an issue with that just in terms of the width of the corridors. Primarily a companion, I mean, someone that my granddad could discuss things with and also, you know, get some information that he wouldn't otherwise get sitting watching television with somebody else beside her sort of talking to her about what was going on you know it could definitely make a cup of tea and it could definitely make um, uh, you know meals and clean and dust and all that stuff that you'd expect of the, one of these appliances for sure we use them for all kinds of things um, mainly manual work and mainly in the hotels Charlie's great because he's not super intrusive. So if the kids get home and they want to go off into a room and play together, um, or if they get home and they've all got homework, he just lets them go in and do their thing while he sort of makes dinner, cleans up the house, makes sure it's tidy for when Sean and I get home. Cleaning rooms, cleaning dishes, carrying bags for guests, and um, very occasionally in the, in the less prestigious venues, we've used them as to do basic concierge duties, meeting and greeting, that kind of thing. We've spoken um, to some of the manufacturers because they offer kind of a personalised service. So we've had some meetings about it um, because obviously you can't just unbox them and let it go. So we're trying to, we're in conversations at the moment to try and get the right, the right model for them because I know there's kind of, there's lots of new models coming out. So we've narrowed it down. To be able to see what's going on in the nursing home when none of the family are there, because that's the bit you never see. I wanted to see uh, his sleeping patterns, uh, was he eating well, what kind of calorific intake was he having and even um, on the off chance uh, if the robot happened to capture information from his actual medical records like his blood tests and everything so I thought maybe because the quality of doctors in India is good but I, th I thought maybe yeah, I could get some second opinions. Every day they want, they want ice cream and they want candy and they want chocolate, they, they, they want the same things that all kids want. Uh, which are really not ideal for their health and well-being. So Charlie stops them from having a tub of ice cream when they get home and they're of course not very happy about that. Somebody goes in to, to his house and kind of monitors his interactions with people in, in his life so that they can kind of pre-program the robot to fit in with that, which is quite encouraging. If I want, I can actually trigger the camera on the robot to capture certain moments in his life and that's, uh, I've done that a few, on, on a few occasions without being too intrusive. In many ways it's actually quite convenient that he won't give them ice cream or candy or chocolate or anything like that because then that leaves it to Sean and I to give them the kids and then we get to be the nice people. We don't, we don't see them very often, sadly again, just due to the nature of our work so it's good for us to be the good guys. When the rooms are still occupied, we make sure to use the maids but when guests have checked out, yeah, we, we just hand it over to the bots now. The reason I bought it, it's not just for my grandparents, is I wanted to record that experience with them so that I can live with that memory the robot has as if my, my grandparents never left me. I'm Dr. Laj Bailey and I'm a reader in ethnographic studies. When we first got it, we had to make sure that any, um, any service providers that came to the house all had to sign a disclosure form. And there was a bunch of small print that I'm sure nobody actually read, but it basically says that, that the company is monitoring anything that can potentially, you know, it's like when you, you, you call a technical support line and they say, you know, this, this call may be monitored for training purposes and you think about, uh, you know, you, you don't really think much about it. And, and we realized that it was basically saying, you know, this house may be monitored for training purposes. I think what made us really uncomfortable was noticing how it had a tendency to always be around people. Now that seemed really logical at first. It seemed that it had a social element. Um, but then we realized that, you know, whenever there was a family gathering, it was always kind of, 
it would default to being in the room. Somebody would say something about um, headache medication and then the next day we have an email about a number of headache medication that were available and it felt a little bit uncomfortable that we were paying for it to be one thing and and trying to benefit from that and actually the company was benefiting from it for doing something entirely different. So the robot had a full access to everyone going in and out of the house. It had full access to audio and visual in any room of the house. It had full access of, to things like the kettle boiling or the microwave running because these, all of these devices were integrated within the network and it's integrated within the network. And, but it, was a, it had a live link to you know, a, a multinational corporation. And then we realized that what was happening was that actually the robots were altering the walk time so that they always encountered one another. What we think is that it's sort of a level of programming so that it feels normal to have a robot, so that it makes it, you don't feel alienated because you're the only one on your block, so that the robots manipulate their, t their schedule so that you interact with other people. Now the flip side of that is that you interact a lot less with people who don't have robots. My wife and I are of the generation where we lived through, you know, the ups and downs of Facebook, right? So we, you know, we were in university when, when it started and lived through the whole chaos, both kind of during and after. And the purpose of Facebook was to gather information. They'd need more and more users to be able to collect more and more data. And you realize that they are designed for a long-term best outcome, not for a short-term honest answer. It's almost like you, you, we've all met people who are ideal, ideologically focused on a cer single sort of outlook. And the robots are ideologically focused um, on an outlook that is the best way to take care of elderly people is to have robot carers in their homes. I've got two brothers and two sisters. There's a, a monthly fee that gets deducted from my paycheck because our company has a, an, an agreement with the company that released this line of bots. It would cost about £700 a week for him to go into a nursing home. Sometimes they even get tipped, so that's a, a nice bonus. We were able to set up a plan with one of their pensions to pay for the robot on a, on a kind of longer term lease. Um, but we, I mean obviously, they weren't able to choose, choose it. If we were embarking on this whole thing as a family, we would probably have a family meeting. From my immediate family and cousins, I managed to convince them this, this is a good thing. And Because it was a lease, we had to, to have the first year. But after the first year, there was a renewal point and, and we decided not to renew after that point. Really good, yeah. Um, works out at about £2.50 per hour, assuming 60% activity. So, you know, human labour can't beat that. Rental agreement for a, a period at least in order to test out whether it is going to work and whether it's going to make a difference. And that's, that's what we would want to do. So once you take into account the cost of the robot and then the cost of utilities and food on top, then it kind of, it works out similar really. Um, anything over, we'd obviously have to, to top up, but at the moment it's, it's about, about the same. A lot of my savings went into it. I mean, it's easier to say money is nothing, right? I mean, but yeah, obviously the money pinches, but what pinches even more is that my, I won't be able to take care of my granddad because I'm, I live in the UK, I don't live in India myself, and I wanted to take care of him via proxy, but I can't anymore. Well, as they said in a contract, after the usage of the robot, I don't have a reason to keep it anymore because my grandparents passed away. Hi, I'm Aegis Gillins and I'm an entrepreneur. Right now we have 30 bots online across the estate and there's going to be 22 coming online at half past nine. Just to give you an idea of the, the kind of efficiency savings we're seeing, year to date we've saved over £700,000 in labour costs. Yeah, we're by no means alone. There's, there's plenty of other businesses using bots in this, this kind of job and across different industries, really. Um, we're having our inaugural Northwest 
bot labor networking event next month. So hopefully that'll be really useful. We can get a bit of traction and, um, and yeah, apply some pressure at Westminster, hopefully. We've had difficulty with one of the companies in particular. Um, you know, it's all to do with contracts and terms and conditions. It's ongoing, but you know, it's gonna be a landmark case and we're confident. Well, they're certainly not artificially intelligent. So uh, the way I see it, there's no issue. To be frank, I see them as 21st century Luddites. This is uh, bot number 10. He's online at one of our smaller establishments at the moment. It's actually one of the older models, but as you can see, we get pretty good live feed. He's currently on a lost property job. This is his 17th task of his shift. Um, from an employer's perspective, it's fantastic. I can see what's going on, see how much it's costing. Um, yeah, it's great, it's fantastic. Um, so let's hope he finds whatever's gone missing. Yeah, hacking is a real live issue. Um, the problem is you don't really know your adversary. Some of them are anti-robot labor. Some of them are just anti-robot. Some of them are just trying to show off their hacking skills. Some of them are trying to use the robots to get some other political message across. Um, primarily they're kids. And yeah, it's a real, real issue. But I think this is why security is the industry to be in these days. But all of the data centers and the algorithms that run the bots are actually offshore. So um, that's, that has an impact on the legal issues. No, 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 we don't have any personal bots in any of our businesses, no. But at the moment we only go to see him once a week anyway, so he does spend quite a lot of time on his own. So um, I think it, it's somebody, just a physical presence in the house. In spite of having some pushback from my immediate family and cousins. I managed to convince them this, this is a good thing. Um, some people carry dolls around and talk to them and they hold them like a baby and all that sort of thing. So the fact that something isn't actually a human being doesn't stop it from being quite a useful sort of um, aid to somebody feeling less alone. I think it was helping him, or it would have helped him rather. Something really interesting happened, something that I hadn't foreseen. Now, this type of interventionist approach is not common in a country like India, even now. So I, I have no idea how the rest of my family feels about it. They frankly don't know at this point. We've only had Charlie for three months. Well, yes, the, the staff are quite worried, but we're never going to replace them entirely. I would like to have the memory it recorded the time I had it. However, I don't have it anymore as they took it away. With, with Bill, as he got, gets older, we didn't want it to change behavior all of a sudden or even just change little things about the routine that, that they were used to having. You know, and so what we actually did is we opted in for non-automatic updates. But then eventually the robot became um, an object of hate in the household. Thankfully, not many of our employees are actually part of the union. We're trying to introduce it to him gradually, but he, we're kind of going on the payoff, being that he doesn't have to go into a nursing home, well, not just at the moment anyway. Part of the reason why we haven't told them yet is because I think it's gonna be a bit of a struggle. Um, my parents are both very tech savvy, very, very pro-tech people but Sean's parents were farmers. Not a single person actually saw the intention behind why I wanted to introduce such a thing. My uncles haven't spoken to me since, by the way. Yeah, there's all kinds of benefits, really. I mean, the, the remote cameras are particularly useful. Um, let's say we've had an improvement in human labor since the bots have been around. DW2124J, this, is, this was the registration for my robot before. Well, I, I would like to rec reference myself as a hacker of those robots. I actually fight for them. So I have access to all those data. Like whatever the robot is recording, I have a, I have a hand on everything. Um, I haven't really been approached by the police yet. Um, it's just a matter of time, I think. I would always argue the case as this is a trade-off. Uh, it depends on what we would like to trade off for the services we have. I have you know, everyone have different identities. Of course, I own more than just the hacker one. 
Well, first of all, we return several data to the people who would like to have those access to the data, like I do personally. And also, you know, as we have our hands on several things and we need to support the community, we've done some tradings on this information as well. I can't really disclose more than that, but we profit a bit from this to support our more actions. I think I would like to not talk about it here now with other people here. We can change the And you, you know, the the sales pitch is really, I wouldn't say convincing. It's it's just feels very reassuring. The people from the the company are really good at kind of spending time in that month prior to to installation for it going live. They do spend quite a lot of time kind of pre counselling him almost and and getting used to the idea. I believe it was it was actually marketed through one of the health companies. Um, so it felt like the company behind it was fairly secure. Well, the promotional film seems to be suggesting that the robot is quite trustworthy. Is the way it's programmed is to tune in to the to the person it's it's servicing, if you like, and put their needs above everything else. As I said, we didn't renew after the year. We didn't, and we would have got rid of it sooner if we were allowed to. So, after my grandparents passed away, of course, the company has to record the robot. But I don't want it to go. I know it would go away, but I don't know they will take that part of data away as well. We've had difficulty with one of the companies in particular. Um, you know, it's all to do with contracts and terms and conditions. It's ongoing, but you know, it's going to be a landmark case, and we're confident. I think that that the ownership of the units is a real problem because they're owned by the companies they come from um, and there really is just a small number of companies and they for the most part are are essentially sponsored by a pharmaceutical company and by a technology company um, and generally by a data company and because of the joint ownership like that, it's really hard to know what reassurance you have about that company ownership, about where any information that comes from that unit goes to. Like they were just kicking me in between departments to say this is not their issue. I've talked with their legal department, I talked with their salesperson, of course, I talked with their um, like data analysts as well, just to figure out who has what kind of access to my data and why would they, why would they like to hold it. It was very ambiguous on the contract. We felt that either somewhere between our understanding of the terms and conditions became more clear, and, but also that what the company was taking was, what the, the um, pharmaceutical company was taking from, from it was it, kind of expanding. Um, and again, that may have just been because we were becoming more aware of the terms and conditions, but it also, I think it was, it did feel like they were becoming more and more aware of, of the ability to um, collect data uh, for various other projects, you know, that we got it as a robot carer and what it was turning into was a research tool for the company. On the other hand, some of the startups in this space are being really positive. I think, um, I think they can see the market opportunity. You know, with all computer systems, there's a, a level of risk that that you need to accept and because they are monitored so closely um, as soon as anything kind of happens and we have access um, we'll have a camera there as well so we can kind of monitor what's going on so I think that the level of um, kind of safeguards now have improved quite significantly. I think we found it really deceptive I think that that's what we found about it was that it was deceptive and it wasn't deceptive in itself it was deceptive in the way that it was um, promoted and, and kind of pitched. Hi, I'm Veronica Simpson and I am a senior manager with a, a tech company that you've almost certainly heard of. They all love technology. I bring home things from work all the time and they just, they love to play with it, so. I think the kids would act differently if they knew that they were being recorded. Uh, and And I don't think that would be Hmm. Yeah, I, th I think they would act differently if they knew they were being recorded and 
and we don't want that. We don't want them to feel like they need to change their behavior just because they have a robot taking care of them, not, not a sitter, if that makes sense. I think, well, I guess it depends. Discipline's a harsh word to use with parents. Um, and I don't wanna, I don't wanna give the wrong impression. Uh, he's, he's broken up arguments between them before. He sometimes has separated the children uh, if they've been at each other's throats about something or another. Uh, but he would never hit them. We're aware of the growing problems associated with technological attachment disorder. We're hoping that our children just won't suffer from it. It seems to only strike some people and not others. Um, we have good counseling services available in the event that they are struck by TAD. Um, but ultimately, we're hoping that they just deal with Charlie's departure, Charlie's death, um, with the same strength and resilience that they do. Deaths of dogs, deaths of pets. Death in, death in the family. I'm, I'm hoping that they'll learn something from it uh, as opposed to suffer from it. I mean, death is complicated for, for everyone and everything, so. At this point, the anti-robot labor movement is, is a fringe movement, and I don't see it growing, quite frankly, especially given the reliance of, of basically the entire globe on technology in various forms. I'm not concerned about them focusing on our little tiny family and, and our use of one little tiny robot. I think that they'll focus their efforts on, on companies that are taking advantage of robot labor more so than on families and individuals supporting themselves. I only ever look through what he feeds them, really. Uh, I, I try to keep track of what they're eating just for my own sake. I, I'm curious if there's ever an issue with him and he has to go in for maintenance i'd like to know what he's been feeding them so that i can continue with that but otherwise no i i occasionally look at the videos i think sean does more of that than i do but but he he does keep track of a variety of other things uh if i had to describe to someone else what charlie did for my family what he meant to my family i would say that he's he's kind of he's kind of like a pet uh, except that he takes care of my children and he's, he's their friend now too, so he's great. <laughs>